people quite often store their information in spreadsheets. And when you keep all your information on one sheet, like I'm about to do here, that's known as a flat file database. Now, what we find is large organizations, such as libraries, rarely do that. So let's have a look why. Imagine we wanted to store all the information for our library on a single sheet, uh, like I'm doing here. So we probably want to keep more information about the borrowers than I'm about to keep here, but this is just a, a simple example. And libraries um, often allow you to uh, um, borrow multiple books. So um, our local library, I think, allows you to borrow 10, but just for the sake of simplicity, I've got six here. So imagine uh, a new person comes along and they join the library. So we ask them their name. So uh, John Smith, now I happen to know John, and he smells his name with a Y, and he lives in Rugby, say. So I'm not going to use the full address. Um, and he comes along and he borrows a book. Spreadsheets are OK. So I'm putting uh, John's name in there, and I'm recording which book he's borrowed. He might have borrowed more than one book, so he might want to you know, read a classic in the evening. So um, let's uh, lend him Jane Eyre as well. OK, so then what happens um, when John Smith comes back, and next time there's a different person on the desk, and they mishear his name. And so John Smith comes in, and he brings back his spreadsheets OK, uh, are okay and he borrows databases um, for dummies and he's got a, a child with him so he borrows something like uh, Peppa Pig's party and you know a different book and then somebody else comes in so Joe Bloggs comes in and um, he borrows. Um, well, he lives in he lives in Nuneaton, and he also likes a classic. So he borrows Jane Eyre, and he also likes a spreadsheet. So he borrows uh, spreadsheets. Are okay, and then uh, John comes back. And they get his name right this time. Uh, but he says, oh, I've moved. I've moved to Nuneaton. And then he uh, borrows um, some you know, science encyclopedia or something. So it doesn't really matter what the books are. So this spreadsheet can cope with the data that uh, we're putting into it. But notice a couple of things. First of all, um, the most uh, books that anybody's borrowed so far is two. So nobody's borrowed more than two books. You could borrow up to six in this library, uh, but most of the time those fields are going to be empty. So that's a bit of a waste of space in our file here. Also, we've got repeated attributes. So if you look further into relational databases and you learn about normalization, we've got um, repeated attributes here. All these fields are really the same piece of information. So we're not in first normal form there. Um, the second time John came in, they misspelled his name and they also missed out where he lived. And we've also uh, we've got a bit of inconsistency in the spelling of the data. That could cause a problem. Also, he's moved. So we've got two records in there. The first record says he lives in Rugby. The second says that he lives in Nuneaton. And the third problem is um, when two people have borrowed the same book, it doesn't necessarily go into the same field. So we can use filtering in Excel to do some sort of database type analysis. So if I turn the filters on in this spreadsheet, uh, you'll be able to see uh, the sorts of problems we might encounter. So if I want to find all the books borrowed by John Smith, for example, one of the problems I'm going to encounter is that it misses out anywhere there's a misspelling of his name. And if I want to find all of the people who live in rugby, for example, or all the books that are borrowed in rugby, it's missing out the ones where I omitted the information. But the thing that's really tricky is what about if I wanted to um, find all the people that borrowed a particular book? So if I wanted to find all the people that borrowed Spreadsheets Are OK or Jane Eyre, I need to look across all six book fields, don't I? So I need to um, find where book one is Jane Eyre 
well, if I do that, I can't I struggle to do that. I can't do book one is Jane Eyre or um, book two is Jane Eyre just using the filters here. Um, so if I go to text filters, I might be able to do that. So if I say equals, there we go, um, Jane Eyre. But I can only do that across um, two columns in, so I can say or, um, in fact, I can only do it on the same column as well. So that's not really gonna help me. So um, I'm a bit stuck if I want to find out everybody's borrowed Jane Eyre because it might be in six possible locations. So for this reason, because of the inconsistency that gets developed um, as, as the database fills up and possible misspellings and uh, omitted data and the difficulty of searching, uh, a better way to store this information is in something called a relational database. So in a relational database, information about each entity, and an entity might be a thing, a person, or a process, a process that would link together uh, other entities, uh, each entity is stored in a separate table in the database. So effectively, there'd be a database of people and a separate database of books, and then there'd be a database of loan information that would link those two things together. So in the following videos, I'm going to show you how to create a library system using access, but the process will be the same for any type of relational database.